Good morning, good morning everyone. How are you today? Our last day of the Web Summit. It's been like a marathon ride, but so interesting. So many things, so many startups, great content. My name is Jamilet, and I'm gonna be your MC for the Machine Demo stage today. So thank you. Can I have a big round of applause? Yeah, that we are, we are woken up today. For those who haven't seen the machine demo before, the way this works, we have five top startups. They're going to present us their products in AI, machine learning, hardware and lot, and games, VR, and AR. They're gonna have seven minutes, we'll be watching here on the clock, to present their product. And after that, there's going to be a Q&A session. And you are the ones that are gonna be able to have this session. Only go to the Web Summit app through your profile, you click it there, then there's the Slido Q&A. And you have to choose the right stage. So machine demo stage, input your questions, and after the presentation, I'm gonna be asking the questions to the presenters. If you happen not to have the Web Summit app, which I know all of you have, you can also go to slido.com and enter the Web Summit code. So are we all ready for our first presenter? Yes or no? So let's welcome here on the stage, Olivier Sirojal from Olodia, ESA. Good morning, Lisbon. I'm Oliver Zietvogel, thank you for presentation. I'm Oliver Zietvogel, CTO and co-founder of uh, Olodia. I have a first question to ask you to all of you. Who does fitness? Right. A lot of people. Who finds sometimes fitness boring? More or less. Great. So we are trying to make fitness fun at Olodia. So as I said, Sorry. So basically, we came to the conclusion that fitness is boring. The walk-up time is endless. You watch the same stuff all the time. And there is no motivation to push yourself harder. So we came up with a solution that we call the All of Fit. And this solution basically is bringing gaming to fitness by connecting virtual reality headset. But moreover, it's a sport tech platform. Unfortunately, we were unable to bring a fitness machine here so because of security reasons. So here is a video that will showcase a little bit what is our product. So how does this work? Basically, as I said, we're trying to make fitness fun. So we have decided to connect a VR headset to a fitness machine. Most of the fitness machine are already able to send data with um, uh, the embedded computer or with a computer, we generate real-time graphics. It's like bring, bringing video game to sports, as I said before. Also, we are connected to the cloud in order to collect the data. And there is a companion app that helps the user uh, to uh, 
see again his workout, collect um, uh, the data, uh, see the statistics and uh, stuff like that. But it's also a dashboard for the fitness club, the hotel chains, to see and monitor the usage of their uh, users. Um, what do we offer? So we have more than 100 workout options. Thanks to three different fitness machines supported right now and later probably more. This uh, also uh, um, uh, is accompanied with gameplay technology. But everything is about the content. What is the content? We create realistic and fantasist environment. A little bit for everybody. Again, better in image. So um, now that you've seen how it works, what is the content, how do we make fitness fun actually? So I told you that we have 100 workout options, but this is done through what we call sport play. Sport play are different motivation technologies that we took from the game industry, like rewarding, getting trophies, uh, being in race mode, multiplayer mode, being against the clock, being against yourself. And this creates these sports. Also, in order to help the user to motivate his effort, we have created what we call the virtual coach. So basically, it's an artificial intelligence that looks at your workout data, your desire, how you want to lose weight, how you want to take muscles in order to coach you in real time. But later, it will also be a social network helping any coach around the world to connect in real time to yourself, uh, to your workout. <laughs> That was the most incredible experience of my life. I work out in New York City with all the top studios, and I don't ever want to be without this now. That was incredible. Yeah, you're great. Right. So thank you for listening to me, and sorry again not to be able to do a real demo. It was a pleasure. Merci, Olivier. Thank you very much. We are going to do the Q&A. Don't leave us, don't leave us. I have a couple of questions here. Are you planning to sell it to fitness centers? We are already selling to fitness center. Actually, that's our first, I would say, consumer market, I would say, is to go through the fitness clubs. What's your competitor? So we started, I think we were the first in, in the world because we were already, already 2014 at the time of the first Oculus DK1 was ready on the market. Uh, right now we saw competition starting. Uh, one, one big competitor could be Verzoom. It's never good to say bad things about your competitors, but they try to do hardware. And we are a software platform, a software company. You cannot improvise yourself as a, uh, as a hardware fitness machine manufacturer. So we are compatible with what's existing. We do not mess around with the hardware. We just connect and be compatible. Perfect. Another question. What is your revenue model and which gym equipment providers you're ready and are interested with? 
So the, the business model is uh, 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 based on subscription, right? We are not making money on the hardware. Again, we are software. So what we want is our user to stick with us. So we ask them to pay a, a monthly a subscription basis. And what was the second question? What are the equipments that you so are working we, with or interested okay. in? Right now, we support the stepper. We support uh, the rower. And uh, we support uh, the elliptical bike or the... Um, what I said. So bike, rower, and stepper. But we are now working to do other sports, weightlifting, golf, tennis. But this is the augmented reality time. Again, we are not doing hardware. We use VR headsets because that's cool right now. But this is indoor sports. We are going outdoor when the AR glasses are ready. I don't know if there are some companies working in AR, but we are waiting for you guys to do your job. And 50 degrees of field of view is not enough. So this is a question from me. You are a content creator. You want to create experiences and transport your audience to these fantasy worlds. How do you get your inspiration? So it's not only fantasy world. We started fantasy world because we thought that the millennium generation would be very, very uh, the first uh, buyers. But actually, we have more older customers that come to sports or that come to sports via gaming because basically we are promoting gaming in a way as well. So it's very interesting to see how much people who never played any video game now work out, so do sports, and play at the same time. Perfect. Last question. Who is responsible for your graphics? What's your partner? So um, we, are, we have an in-house studio. Everything, every single pixel of this thing is produced by our studios with the music alone. So far, we want to keep that. Once we raise a little bit more money, we are here for that as well, we can probably also create an API to open it to external studios. But right now, to set up the quality, to set up, to control a little bit what we are doing, we don't want crap on it, we do it ourselves. Super, another round of applause for Olivier. Merci. Quanta place. Our next demo is coming. Oh, hello. <laughs> we have Leo Scott Smith from Tenden. Please welcome him on the stage. So, this was a regular sight for me um, about four years ago. My background was actually in charity. Um, and following the devastating 2015 earthquakes of Nepal, I spent eight months of my life working with vulnerable children in disaster zones to provide immediate and crucial life-saving support. But I often faced different dangers such as aftershocks, landslides, and even ambushes. At the same time, my mother, who lives alone, fell from a ladder whilst renovating her house. She wasn't seriously injured, but it could have been so much worse. And this got me thinking, what would happen if either myself or my mother were involved in the unthinkable and nobody was there to call for help? And this is where we came on to tend it. So this is Leo's story and why Tended was set up. Now let me tell you more about the problems in the industry and what we're up against. So every year, two and a half million people around the, year, around the world are killed in accidents at work. That's 6,300 people a day. That's the equivalent of everyone at Web Summit in the UK uh, injured at, at work. Um, that's 15 billion pounds cost to the UK in insurance, healthcare, um, and dealing with the aftermath of these accidents, um, let alone the, the personal cost. And that's um, almost enough to pay for a little part of Brexit. So another element of that is that we track, uh, we do not track employees because it's a hugely um, risky subject. Um, it's something that people are not looking to, um, looking to do. So tended as a business, we are here to help end preventable loss of life. And Leo's now going to just show us um, what a demonstration of our products does.
So this is our web platform, and what we've created is a uh, effectively a safety solution which is used by different enterprise clients to be able to monitor and see an overarching view of all of their employees. So um, this is made up of three key components, really. So we've got our wearable devices, which is what I've got on my wrist and Damien has in his hand, our commercial web platform, which you'll be able to see on the screens up here, um, and then the uh, uh, mobile app, which our wearable devices are connected to. So the way that these devices work is they are constantly monitoring the user's movements um, and creating trends using machine learning algorithms to effectively know what their movements look like and compare them uh, into, into relation to the activity that they're taking part in. By doing this, it means that we can um, accurately determine what a accident or an abnormality may look like. Um, and by doing this, uh, it means that within seconds, we can accurately detect these accidents and send for help. And we're gonna show you that in action now. So Damien is now going to resemble a fall. Um, we've had previous issues trying to do this on our demo stage because we specifically built our solutions not to do that. The people over there might be able to see that it's now asking him if he's safe. So um, either he can leave that for 60 seconds and then it'll automatically send out for help or he can double tap it and then that'll say, well, actually, no, that was a false alarm. I am still safe. Um, and then the alternative is you can manually activate it as well. So you do this by holding it down for five seconds um, and then at that point, um, he will then release and it will send off for help, which is now activated on his smartphone. Now, what it's now doing is it's gathering his location and sending out for help. Um, uh, we are having a bit of a trouble with gathering location because there are so many devices in the, uh, in the room at the moment. Um, but once that's gathered, as you'll see, it then sends an alert through to our web platform. And um, you probably won't see it, but it's also sent a number of emails and text messages through to me. And um, I've now got... So that can go out to up to five main points of contact within the business. So they know that the, one of their employees has been in danger. Um, and then from within that platform, they can then see details such as where Damien is, um, his health information, his activity information. They can either resolve that and then add notes on that. Um, where this is really useful is on this stage, it may seem totally irrelevant, but imagine that Damien was involved uh, on a, he was working on a gas field where he was on his own and there was a particular level of danger and he was to be involved in an accident. It might be hours or even days before people know that he was involved in this accident. And for that, the most important thing for, for uh, avoiding a fatality in work is post-accident response time. And as Damien said, the cost of accidents in the workplace can be very significant. Can we go back to our other slide, please? Now, um, so that was a very quick touch on what we are doing now and what we're selling, but we're not just about being able to detect accidents, because that's cool and it will save a lot of lives, but what we really want to do is push the boundaries with technology and advance our machine learning to be able to not just detect them, but to be able to predict and prevent them. So we're working with some of the world's largest companies to be able to effectively gather different sets of data and then analyze everything that they have going on in the business and look at their geolocation of their employees and their movement patterns. And by doing this, it means that we can, in certain scenarios, um, predict and prevent some accidents. So this works through two bases. So we have our, uh, our logistics platform. And the way that this works is when an employer is wearing one of our devices and they get into a car, they will automatically be connected to that car. And then if they take part in any dangerous driving activities, similar to your telematics for young drivers, they will get instant feedback on their wrist to tell them that they need to be slowing down or, or driving more safely. Um, and then on top of that, we then have an indoor solution, which is using a, a collection of Bluetooth beacons um, and our existing wearable devices to be able to position where people are, zone different areas within buildings and tell people if they're going into certain areas they shouldn't be, or if they are getting too close to particular dangerous moving vehicles, which could potentially result in an error. So that was a really quick overview of that because it would, be, it would have taken a lot longer than seven minutes to go into it. But as a summary, we're using uh, machine learning and wearable technology to uh, predict, at, oh, oh, to be able to uh, prevent accidents. So join us in making Tended a globally recognized brand for personal safety. And in doing so, you can help to save lives around the world.
Thank you to Leo and Damien. Great presentation. It's now for time for Q&A. And remember, you can go into the Slido app. First question here from Bruno. Is your product already implemented or ready for a big company? Uh, yes, it is. If you've got a big company, come and talk to me at the end of the day. Um, yeah, we're working with, as I showed on the, uh, the, the slideshow there, we're working with companies like Nestle and Rolls-Royce and they're implementing it. And we've got a number of smaller companies as well. Super. What is, what's your main target in terms of the companies? You're targeting any tech companies or, or the ones that are working more on the field? Um, so it's mainly sort of companies that would have at-risk workers and employees. Um, so it ranges really. So it's a very uh, turnkey solution. So it works for logistics companies, manufacturing, healthcare. Um, it's really anybody where employees could be at risk. However, when you mention tech companies, one of the companies we're currently discussing is Microsoft for their Azure data centers and all their at-risk sort of uh, engineers. This is a great one. How do you handle data privacy? So I didn't touch on it because it's quite a lot to go into, but one of the things that we're really focused on is employee safety and security um, and privacy. Uh, and the reason behind that is that, um, I think Damien touched on it, 67% of employees are totally against using tracking devices. So um, we've said, well, we're not going to create a tracking device. So the only time that you can see an employee's location is if they have an accident. Um, and that's the only time. And then in terms of the driving stats and things like that, the only time you can see how they've been driving or where they've been driving is if they fail to respond to the notifications on their wrist to tell them to slow down and be safer. So really, the only time that there's any element of invasion is if someone is really in danger and they need it, or if they're doing something that which endangers the, the general public. That sounds very clear, but how do you convince your clients, your elevator pitch, that really there's not going to be any bridges? Um, I mean, so we're um, sort of slapped down with a number of different certifications, like your ISO 27001, 9001, Cyber Essentials, and we're going through SOC 2 at the moment. And basically that means that we have to abide by the highest level of uh, security and privacy with our data, because we are handling personal data, but that is all encrypted. And the only time that's un unencrypted is when people really need it. And I'm sure if it was my data being shared, which I've given them consent to do already, or me dying, it's an easy decision between the two. I'd hope so, at least. True, true. <laughs> what about the hardware, the design of the device? Everything is totally proprietary. So machine, our machine learning is our core IP. Um, so we haven't, I don't know whether I touched on it, but that's a 98% accuracy on detecting accidents. So that's only a 2% false positive rate, which to our knowledge is the highest in the industry at the moment. Um, and um, our hardware is proprietary. Everything, yeah, is all done in-house. We have a team of 30 people coming from Intel, McAfee, Rolls-Royce. So, yeah, we're, 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 we're all about doing things in-house. Super. Well, thank you very much once again to Leo and Damien. Applause for Ten Dan. <laughs> By the end of the demos, we're also going to have a poll for you to vote for the favorite product. And the winner is going to come later on for the finals at 2.15 in this same stage. Next, we are having from Sun Power, Siva Chenupati, to tell us more about his product. Please welcome on the stage. Oh, here it comes. Yes? Okay. Having a hardware takes some time. <laughs>
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sunflower Demo Demonstration. Before jumping into how Sunflower works and what we do, I would like to ask you one question. How many of you do you know that one hour of solar energy coming to the Earth is enough to satisfy human needs for one entire year? Pretty sick, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh, the main problem that we were tackling is the fact that, huh, well, I should go back, I'm sorry, I messed up this. Um, the problem is that even if we have all this solar energy coming to the earth and it's actually there and it's able to satisfy our needs, today we're choosing non-renewable energies, which not only are polluting our planet, but are also not enough to satisfy our needs. 50% of the global population has no access to internet. And that's mainly due to the fact that we have no stable electricity. More than 1 billion of people have no electricity at all, which not only reduces their standard of living, but they also don't give them access to all your services, main of the services you're here to present, and such as, for example, shipping. And this is why Sunflower is coming in is enabling these people to have access to that such a services. Okay. And that's how Sunflower will address that problem. As you can see, this is not a normal wind turbine. Uh, next slide, Vidya. So it's, it's uh, pushing the wind like a bird. It's not uh, screwing the wind or cutting the wind when you're making a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sound. This is very, very, very quiet compared to a standard wind turbine because we are pushing the wind. Like here, you can see this is pushing the wind this side, and here is not pushing the wind. So it's, it's, uh, it's going with the wind. Uh, so it's pretty unique. This is a 30-year-old idea. Uh, which came to life recently, and uh, this has a lot of other applications and advantages. Uh, we'll come to that afterwards. So actually, this is uh, an impossible uh, propeller to do it. Uh, basically, I'm from an electronics background. Uh, I have more than 30 patents in electronics, uh, but this is my first mechanical patent. I showed it to one of my friends uh, who's a mechanical engineer, and they said, like, oh, how, how did you do that? This is impossible. You can't put. Uh, that's the reason I tell him this is the reason why no one did this in the past 400 years. So this is an impossible propeller. We made it possible to put so, such a big, so many nine gears into that small red hub. Yeah, everything is in there, actually. All the, the, the technique to, to turn the blades and rotate and uh, everything is in that uh, small. It's done through optimization from a different domain and convert that into mechanical uh, concepts. So what's so special about this uh, propeller is uh, uh, it's the world's first uh, inclined axis propeller. Basically, it's supposed to be inclined axis, like you see in the picture. It uses both lift and drag, which is more efficient than any standard wind turbine. Uh, we, we come to know about like 3 to 7 percent more efficient than the standard wind turbine. Uh, it uses both lift and drag forces simultaneously. That because of that, it's, it's more efficient. And, uh, and uh, technically, we can put uh, solar panels on that. And, uh, that makes it the world's first true hybrid. Uh, we don't have separate uh, solar and solar separate wind but with a different mass. So it's too expensive installation. Kind of, a lot of issues are there. It's the world's first uh, to put uh, solar panels because it's flat. It's low cost to manufacture those those blades. And you can see that uh, uh, the blades when uh, one blade has a tape uh, when it's running slowly and uh, it's flipping. So it's not not only just uh, um, rotating, it's, it's uh, going, uh, changing the direction, it's flipping. So when you put it vertically, when the dust falls on top of it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's self-cleaning. And also at the same time, the wind is, is cooling the solar panels. So, so we have an added, ex it's less maintenance and uh, we get more efficiency because of the cooling effect and self-cleaning effect. So altogether, it has more advantages. And we can also even connect that with the cross cables and make it uh, scalable to any size, uh, and it's more robust to winds and uh, kind of things. So our first product, we already have a customer uh, lined up for a few hundred thousand units. Uh, 
uh, for powering mobile phone stations. Why mobile phone tower to power stations? This is the biggest market, 5G, yeah. So technically, we can enable remaining 4 billion population with uh, affordable cost uh, to access internet. Uh, basically, the same propeller can also be used uh, to drive drones. Uh, um, you're very fast. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can drive drones uh, and make it uh, uh, go vertically like helicopter and then uh, switch uh, when you're in the air. Uh, we can tilt the, tilt the uh, angle of the propeller during the operation. So now it's pushing the air that way and uh, it's, it's uh, pushing the air that way. And now here it's pushing the air this way now. So during the operation, we can go up by pushing the air down, go like a helicopter after going air uh, into the air. We push the air backwards and it go fast like an airplane. We can deliver like 10 times more range than a standard drone, which is wasting all energy to go up. So this is the V22 concept, much more further uh, like uh, uh, simplified and more stable than a V22. So like we're competing with uh, V22 basically, yeah. So, so we're gonna change, change a lot of things, uh, how people are going to access internet and uh, in the 5G domain, like it could be on the highways or it could be in the remote location, the top of the mountain. Uh, it could be in the, it, it's not just in the developing world and even in the developed world for 5G, you need the solutions. <laughs> Technically we can enable 4 billion people to access internet and to have a possibility for home delivery of uh, the e-commerce uh, services. Thank you. Thank you very much to Siva and Jasmine. Great presentation. Now time for the Q&A. Remember, Slido on your Web Summit app. I do want to ask you, where does the design inspiration come from, Sivan? I, I, sh I quickly stripped that this, this is a 30-year-old idea. Well, it's like when I was age of 12, I was fond of uh, flying. I, I was fascinated by the birds. I mean, I spent a lot of time watching how they're flying. Literally, this is the emulation of a bird. Like you push down to go up and after you go up, you push the air backwards to go front. Uh, like you don't have to do a propeller like rotating like uh, with, with uh, supersonic speeds. You can make a very low noise flight by the by taking the inspiration from the birds. Super. What about the logistics? You were talking about delivery. Uh, okay, we make only this. Mainly we are concentrated on the mechanical hardware. So technically this can be used for power generation or we can also use to propel aeroplanes, air taxis, but, but this one, the small size one we are planning to do, all well, the same one for mobile towers and the same one can also be used for powering drones for delivering goods. But in your, your in-house delivery, once the product is being made and produced, are you working with logistic partners? Um, we work with drone manufacturers and the drone manufacturers will sell it to, to the logistics partners, yeah. Main market at the moment? Uh, mobile phone towers. First market, the same thing. We don't have to change anything. The same can, can be sold to, to drone manufacturers, which can build drones, which can do vertical takeoff and go fast like an airplane, can cover like 50, 60 kilometers uh, delivery range. Any final words you want to say to the audience about your product? Oh, last night I had a great, <laughs> I had a lot of drinks, man. I don't know if you guys, who guys, you guys are here. <laughs> it was very difficult to wake up. Like, thank you very much for making this successful. Like, we had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. We're That's looking for say. manufacturing <laughs> partners. You're welcome to approach us. Yeah. There you go. Once again, thank you very much. You, you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I want you to remind you once again, once we get the setup for our next demo, please enter your questions on the Slido app. And at the end of these presentations, we are going to have the poll for the winner that needs to come here on the finals at 2.15. Maybe I'm gonna go around the audience. If somebody can tell me, what are your first impressions of this demo? Anyone? I know we're all, as Siva was mentioning, we're all tired, it's the last day. I'm gonna go here with the Leo. Tell me, what have you been thinking about the other company's products? Interesting. Yeah, totally, really interesting. Um, I think uh, anything that involves technology and hardware is um, aspirational because we've gone through the horrible journey of hardware and I can tell you, it is one of the most painful things ever. So well done to everybody. 
Super, there we go. We all appreciate the effort from our startups. As we know, it also takes a lot of, uh, of time and passion to be here and presenting to you guys. Up next, Daniel Zazuna from O.Vision. Here he is. Hi, uh, thank you very much for having me. My name is Daniel. I'm the co-founder of O.Vision, and we have created a premium face recognition-based access control solution that is currently the fastest on the market to date. So in literally 0.2 seconds, we're able to recognize a person in motion, even when wearing glasses, hats, with makeup or facial hair. This means you never have to stop when walking through a turnstile again. Because the future is not this, right? But it's that. And currently, this is all built on a proprietary technology consisting of multiple deep convolutional neural networks with very advanced acceleration techniques. This translates to us being at least two and a half times faster than any of our nearest competitors while maintaining an accuracy rate of a false positive of one in 10,000. So this is the chance based on real world testing that we don't recognize someone that is um, in the database. Although we verified this on a data set now and we have found that our true positive rate is 95.5%. So now our probability that we don't recognize someone is 0 0.045 to the power of five. But this is all built in cooperation with our team I'm a student at UCL. We have a team of machine learning engineers uh, with graduate degrees in mathematics, uh, tech lead with over 10 years of experience in IT, three in computer vision. And thanks to partnerships with NVIDIA Inception and AWS Activate, we have been able to combine both software and hardware expertise. We developed an app, so you'll be able to easily register using just one picture and be able to instantly get access to the premises. When you're showing up to a conference, you don't need to wait in line, you just walk right through. Uh, it's a plug and play solution. It integrates with the existing access control systems, security systems, you install it on any turnstile and it works. GDPR compliance, all personal information is already stored on the client side, so we don't touch that because we're understanding that people don't just want to hand over the data. And that's why we also launched an academic research study with UCL Center of Computer and Human Interaction into how we can better build trust with those users that may be hesitant to use our technology. We're the most complete product. As opposed to our competitors, we combine both software and hardware expertise. Typically, you have security systems companies that buy off-the-shelf software. It's cheap, but it's ultimately unreliable and quite slow. And that defeats the purpose. Why wouldn't you just use a key card if it takes you 0.5 seconds to stop and look at the camera, right? And there are facial recognition um, companies that develop the software, but they don't care about the hardware because they have their easier scale solutions and they work potentially with governments. We don't. Our nearest competitor, Higvision in China, was banned from working with US suppliers because they did facial recognition for the Chinese government. We're categorically against that and we will never um, sell our system if it's not being used uh, privately and consensually. Why um, would you install this in an office, right? So you have your easy registration for guests. You decrease any friction at the start and end of the workday, and you also save costs, right? So you're cutting down on staffing costs. You're preventing employees from checking themselves in when they're unabsent, when they're absent from work. And for client-facing uh, companies, you create a positive first impression of technological innovativeness. And for sports venues, this is going to be really exciting because you're going to be able to buy your ticket online. You show up on the day of the venue, and that's it. No queues. You cut uh, down on uh, the time you have to wait in line, you don't need QR codes or tickets, and uh, you increase customer satisfaction overall while also eliminating unofficial ticket reselling, which is big for stadiums and event venues. Currently, we're in three places, so we're getting traction as well. We're in um, uh, Polytechnic University of St. Petersburg, where we create a positive first impression for those uh, people visiting the accelerator space. We are in a Heinz gym where we can automate their check-in process. Uh, we're at Kraft Heinz where um, we uh, cut down on the registration time and really heighten their security. And now soon we're going to be installing the UCL School of Management in Canary Wharf in London. And um, so currently 450 people a day use this system to walk in and out of their office without having to stop, without any of the bother of key cards um, and lines. So, what is our pricing structure like? Because we all want to talk about the financial benefit, not just the, the human elements of it, right? 
Uh, it's a leasing model, right? So we, um, we have a 2,000 pound upfront cost and 500 pound months for leasing and the maintenance that's required because you want to be able to just buy the system and use it. You don't want to deal with having to integrate it and whatnot, training your workers. We do everything. We take care of the whole process. So all you have to do is just say yes, we want this and that's it. We're now raising our seed round. We, uh, this is on the back of 300,000 pounds we raised uh, last year um, with an ongoing commitment from our investors. And we're going to use that to expand their sales and marketing team and start really getting this out there to mass because we know it works. We've seen it uh, in action. And now we just want to make sure that the world sees that as well. And this becomes the standard for every building within at least Europe and in the future of the world. It's ambitious dreams, but you got to start small. And that's why we're looking for corporate partners to scale with and any paid pilot projects to take on right now. So if you're interested in that, um, happy, happy to have a chat. And for the last minutes or so, I guess um, I'll just show off uh, just how fast it is at recognizing me. Uh, literally 0 0.2 seconds. I just have to look. Uh, I guess I'll turn it around um, for the audience. On the right side, uh, so that everyone can see. And um, so imagine I'm just walking, right? Um, and I just look right into it. And as I'm walking or walking up the stairs, yeah, it just opens up and then that's it, right? So it's super easy, um, works really reliably. That's very important. And right now we're using it as a sort of alongside uh, your key card so we don't eliminate that. Uh, yet, and then we're looking also to expand this into other fields, right? So if you can go to a bank in the future and deposit withdraw money using just facial recognition is going to make your life easier. But again, it's all voluntary, right? Uh, so this is for those people who want the speed and convenience. Maybe some people aren't comfortable with that. That's okay, right? Small steps. Um, anyway, I think that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. I hope you enjoyed my little demonstration. Sadly, I couldn't bring a turnstile with me. It's a bit heavy, but uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Very stylish, this design. Thank you. Our first question again from Bruno. He's participating a lot. Great product. How do you deal with the situation of a face changing like plastic surgery or an accident? Um, I think so generally we are have a very advanced uh, face recognition model um, we can deal with aging five ten years not a problem you grow your, uh, your facial hair etc um, if it's really something serious right and the chain uh, the face literally looks different all you have to do is just take one picture and that's it right so uh, it's still a very easy process um, but uh, for day-to-day -day use in very rare cases you won't have to take a picture again for a very long time you'll have your profile and then that's it and you just show up yes we've been hearing around that there's some type of races faces that are not as easy to facial recognize how are you dealing with this so <laughs> there's no such thing as a racist algorithm it's just not enough data and that used to be the case we're all quite privy to um, the problems that we have if we don't have uh, a full data set of a diverse you know um, number of people that's why um, I'm a student at UCL we are in terms of diversity one of uh, you know the leading activists in the UK and I'm very understanding of this our academic research that we uh, take on now is touching on that and generally we're gonna be uh, we're putting it already in places where there is diversity and we have we haven't seen a, a problem so I think generally yeah yeah we're able to deal with that who are your potential clients? So um, we have existing clients and our potential clients are typically like our use cases, right? It's high end offices, high throughput areas, co-working where you're showing up, student accommodation because students like to let in their friends when they're not allowed, right? They're uh, wanting to go through and uh, they lose the key card all the time. It's just a pain and they don't want to deal with it. So uh, I think places like this, high throughput of people, where it matters that you can walk right through without having to stop, so. Do you always have to look direct to the camera? And I'm gonna combine these two questions. Can yeah. it recognize a photo? So, yeah, um, because we use a mobile app uh, in um, 
you're able to take a picture that's already existing, right? Um, and you just uh, upload that and you don't have to stand in front of the camera because that's inconvenient. Right now, uh, you saw with the speed that we have, um, there's 12,000 people in this system uh, onboarding. And that's all through pictures, right? Um, and this, yeah, so you're able to use the existing pictures that you already have. What was the first part of that question? Or if you have to look direct to the camera or if you can go like sideways? Well, you can't go sideways because you're not able to see a face. Even uh, it's, the general rule of thumb is, can a person that knows you well recognize you? If they can't, then our system can't either, right? It's not magic. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, you don't have to particularly look directly at the camera. Most people look at the turnstile. It's about, let's say, 40 degrees in, let's say, left, right, that you have to look, because we want to make it convenient, right? Super. Well, thank you very much, Daniel, once again. Thank you very much. Oh, that vision. Well, we get out uh, the product of the stage. Now we're going to have our last demo very, very soon. Remember, after that, you can go once again on the Slido. You click on your Web Summit app, your profile, there's Slido Q&A, and we're going to have a poll for you to choose your favorite demo. And the winner will come back here in the finals at 2.15. It is very important. We only are going to have 40 seconds for you to vote. So start thinking about your favorite products. Coming up next, I see he's preparing. We have Igor Pelinavik from Cyberfishing.ing. Welcome, Igor. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Igor, and I'm co-founder of Cyberfishing Company. And also, I'm a fisherman. And as a fisherman with 10 years of experience, I'm 100% sure which problems have anglers on the water. How hard it is to find the fish, how difficult it is to choose the right time and place, where to go fishing, uh, which uh, tackles and lures should I use, and uh, how to share uh, of my success with my friends. So that's why we came up with the idea of uh, uh, cyber fishing uh, smart rod sensor that's how it looks like small box it's a sm smart fishing rod sensor you can easily attach it to any kind of your fishing rod looks like this so uh, this solution fits uh, every angler all over the world you can attach this sensor with silicon bands to any kind of your fishing rod and just go fishing as usual uh, sensor is pretty light uh, only 9 grams, so you don't feel it on your rod, uh, and it helps you to collect all the necessary information about your fishing trips. Uh, there is a 3G accelerometer inside, so and when you make a cast, it automatically counts and recognizes your cast. When you catch a fish to save immediately a place, it's just one click, and it immediately saves the GPS location where exactly you caught your fish. Uh, and with double tap, you can put any kind of GPS marker to immediately save the point important for you. It could be anything like a strike or bite or stones or landscape or even a meeting point. And uh, so our sensor is the easiest way to collect data about your fishing trips. And to analyze all this data, we have our special cyber phishing app. Uh, so you download it on your phone, both for Android and iPhone and uh, it's connected with the sensor via Bluetooth. Uh, after your fishing day, your fishing trip will look like this. So you will get your track, all your casts automatically captured, all your hotspots saved for future, saved in memory. If you open your trophy, your fish, you can also see all pictures of your fishes. You can add some trophy details, like type of fish that you caught, your, uh, your tackles that you use to save it for future. And also, you can analyze and see all meteo conditions to understand why you caught your fish. Maybe because of moon phases or tides or air pressure. So, and uh, we started this project only this January. And uh, we're already doing pretty well. We sold about uh, 10,000 units and our smart rod sensor won four inno innovation awards, including innovation of the year in Europe. But uh, this is only the first step of our project. 
and uh, now here we are looking for investment to prepare uh, for the next step of a cyber fishing evolution so uh, we will develop our uh, now our solution works like a personal fishing diary so it's like your fishing logbook and now uh, after our development uh, it will grow into a global social platform so every person who download our application will be available to choose the best place uh, where to go to fishing based of our huge amount of uh, personal fishing success and data of users we will make a forecast a prediction of uh, the best fishing spots in any area all over the world so also you will see, you will be able to choose the best lure that is uh, that works in this area and uh, you will get a forecast uh, which day and uh, time is the best to go on your fishing trip based on weather conditions and uh, forecast again and uh, when we will collect lots of users uh, using cyber phishing device we'll create like a social media network for all anglers all over the world so people will have an opportunity to share their fishing trophies uh, you can see all screenshots on the screen so how it looks like so you will get like a fishing stories a fishing map all news about fishing industry uh, all located in one place so and you will see all analytics about your your fishings your friends fishing uh, you will be able to send uh, all your favorite hotspots to your friend uh, and uh, also we are going to expand and uh, to be part of uh, sports fishing championship and you will be able to see online how professional sport fishermen uh, are fishing so that's the main idea of our project so and at the end of my presentation i would like to say so with cyber fishing fishing will never be the same again thank you very much big round of applause for Igor. I see you're connecting the, your users into the app. Are you thinking of building a community more like a social media platform for them too? Yeah, exactly. N now we are selling only uh, our hardware sensor and it works uh, only with sensor. And uh, soon we'll update our app and it will, it will work uh, for free without any sensor. So we'll build a community, we'll push downloads and uh, collecting people's data. When you're fishing, you might get wet. What is happening with your product? Is it waterproof or there is any, anything if the product is damaged? Yeah, I see a question. Thank you for the question. Uh, it's, uh, it has strong attachment, so this silicon bands uh, works pretty good. And of course, it's 100% waterproof, so you can use it in salt water, in fresh water, doesn't matter. It's uh, UV protected and uh, there is no any temperature damage so you can use it in cold weather or in warm sun so it doesn't matter yeah what's the what's the life so far of your product of the hardware have you tested in terms of guarantee yeah of course so we have two years uh, of guarantee uh, from our side but uh, it's uh, is it i don't know i think like your phone about uh, three or four hour uh, years and uh, because it's cheap product it's the retail price i forget to say it's uh, 79.99 us dollars so 80 and it's affordable price for every fisherman all over the world so yeah and uh, it's more interesting for fishermen to update it in few years for the next generation what's your competitive advantage is it more the hardware or the software uh, for this moment, it's hardware, so uh, our competitors uh, don't have a sensor which can count casts automatically. And uh, of course, we, will, we are developing uh, our software to be number one fishing app in the world. Well, thank you very much once again, Igor. Thank you. Fiber Fishing. Oh, have two microphones now. Now it's the time for us to go to the Slido, remember, go to your Web Summit app on your profile and you can see Slido. There is going to be a poll for you to choose your favorite 
demo of today. Our winner will come right here on the demo stage, last day of the Web Summit, to battle in the final at 2.15. So I want to congratulate once again our startups for being here, demonstrating your products, and to have the courage to be in front of this audience. I want to ask each of you while we're voting, one last word for your product. Um, wow, that's uh, pretty not prepared. Um, one last thing is that um, it's more generic, but technology is here to serve the human beings, right? So we decided to use VR headsets because that's the only way so far to bring fitness fun indoor. But uh, we are really looking forward uh, to be outside as well. Merci Olivier. Liu? Um, we're creating technology which really does have a positive impact on saving people's lives both in the workplace and outside. So I think if that's not a challenge trying to be solved that's a positive one, I, I can't think of much else. Saiva? Oh, we can enable the 4 billion population uh, to have access to internet at uh, uh, affordable cost. Uh, technically, we can double the market uh, potential or the market uh, number of people who can access your apps or uh, services or uh, websites. We can double your market. We have the potential to do that. What about you, Daniel? Instead of uh, already talking about something that I said, I just want to thank the audience for the opportunity to present my demo here. Uh, and I want to say that I'm going to work my hardest to bring this to every single place and venue that you're going to see in the future. And hopefully you can remember this moment and see that it, it all started here with uh, facial recognition for convenience. Igor. Yeah, maybe do you think that a fishing sensor is so niche product, but there are so many fishermen all over the world, uh, even in USA alone, there are about 50 million of anglers. So, and uh, if you have any questions about our product, please welcome to our booth just behind the Siemens. That was great. Now it's time all our startups stand up. We're going to see the winner here on the screens. One last round of applause, and the winner is Odot Vision. You just go here. Thank you to our audience. Thank you to everyone. Oh, he wants to bow. <laughs> bow for everyone. I will see you back here on the finals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night.